Now, Malawi isn't the only country looking at their animal population differently. Rwanda is also seen as an early wildlife success story, at least when it comes to protecting its mountain gorillas. And that can be a boost for local economies through ecotourism. I want to discuss this with Patrick Bergen, chief executive officer of the African Wildlife Foundation. He joins us via Skype from Nairobi, Kenya. Patrick, thank you so much for being with us. Talk to me about how much of an economic lifeline or resource these endangered species can be. Sure, Maggie. Well, thanks. You know, Africa has some of the world's fastest growing economies, but it's important that these countries diversify. Africa has the largest and fastest growing human population, and young people are looking for jobs. So in a lot of these countries, wildlife tourism is responsible for 10 to 20 percent of GDP. And that's a that's a big number and I, I know for all the promise it is a tricky balance when you're talking about ecotourism especially because you want to resist the urge to overbuild or overcrowd that's absolutely right Maggie you know what I say is African wildlife is big Botswana has something like hundred and thirty thousand elephants the Serengeti ecosystem has three thousand lions Wildlife is not something you can do small, or if you do it small, it's called a zoo. And that's not what we're trying to do here in Africa. So if we're gonna do African wildlife, African nations have to set aside very large areas, and then they have to be very thoughtful about where infrastructure goes, where agriculture goes, or they will kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Yeah, it's hard when you're when you've got such pressing economic needs though to do that. What do countries need to make this work, Patrick? You know, the organization I lead, African Wildlife Foundation, we're trying to work with African governments to be a pragmatic partner. There are choices to be made and there are trade-offs, but if African governments are thoughtful, especially about saying what happens where, Africa is huge. The continental United States fits in Africa three times with change left over. So there is space, but we have to be thoughtful save big places for wildlife and conservation. And then again, there is room for agriculture and cities and settlement. Um, as long as we do the right things in the right places, my belief is wildlife and modern cities can coexist. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think this is a really important discussion at a time when we look at the prices for natural resources slumping. We see oil prices low. Um, you know, it, it seems we need to, you talked about diversification, also expand what we think of as natural resources. We know in so many of these areas, local enforcement is so important. Poaching, getting around the poaching and the corruption um, can mean the difference between success and failure. Yeah, I mean, you make a couple of great points. People look at Africa for extraction, mining, natural resources, natural gas. Some of that is necessary, but those resources are not renewable. Wildlife is a renewable resource. A second issue is that a lot of the jobs are in the cities, and wildlife-related jobs and tourism jobs tend to be in the rural areas. So again, we're working with um, African governments. We think it's very important that Africans themselves stand up and be advocates for conservation and see this as part of the future of a modern and prosperous continent. When you talk about ecotourism, you know, it's it's easy to find the faults and the, and the, you know, the abuses or potential abuses. You just said something that really struck me, and that is people think of Africa and think of extraction. When you're building this kind of business around wildlife, it, it seems to me that there's much more potential for the money to stay in a local community, the jobs, the tourism money that stays and halos out from that. That's right, Maggie. I mean, I think of a great country like Botswana. You know, this this week, Africa buried, I think, one of the greatest leaders since Nelson Mandela, and that's former President Masiri of Botswana, who served on the board of the African Wildlife Foundation. Botswana is famous for diamonds. I always say diamonds are a country's best friend. But Botswana did something else which is very, very important. They set aside huge wilderness areas, the Kalahari, the Okavango, the Chobe area. And Botswana has seen that the money that comes in through wildlife tourism does a much better job of getting out to rural areas, funding education, funding people's homes, um, than money from the mining sector. 
Well, it's it's such an, it's such an important conversation to have, not only uh, for, for the conservation part of it, but also when we're talking about economic diversification, we need to think outside the box. And I think this is a perfect example of this. Patrick, thank you so much for being with us today. Patrick Bergen.